hydrogen is our most abundant element and emits just water when it's burned, so it could well play a role in helping us to reach net zero. The government today announced its hydrogen strategy, which promised more than £100 million in funding, but there are questions around the credibility of those tasked with producing hydrogen. Our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, is on Teesside from where he joins us now. Alex. Yes, enjoy the magnificent sight of the Red Car Steelworks here, where you still can. Soon to be demolished, and in its place, a huge industrial park push, pushing Boris Johnson's uh, green energy revolution, as he sees it. Long-awaited strategy was published today, and essentially the government's going to do two things. Yes, fund green electricity-generated hydrogen, but also, far more controversially, put money into the oil and gas companies to also continue funding blue, much less green, hydrogen. This is a 100% hydrogen demonstration fire. Looks right. and feels exactly the same as a sort of normal coal effect gas fire, but it's powered by hydrogen. We're invited in this morning at Highgrove on Tyneside, a gas supply company keen to demonstrate to the world hydrogen yeah. boilers look just like your gas one. This 100% emissions free boiler. Yep. On goes the kettle. Getting a brew on involves no life changing moves. And lo, the zero emission home is upon us. But there's a catch. The hydrogen here is blue hydrogen. Blue hydrogen is a transitional fuel to green hydrogen and the difference between that is blue hydrogen you take methane and you, you split off the hydrogen and capture the carbon underground. It's obviously got losses and there are, there are emissions in the, in the production process but ultimately we need to go to green hydrogen which is produced by electrolysis from electricity. Today's government strategy means supporting green hydrogen from wind turbine electricity and blue polluting hydrogen from gas. But the government's independent energy advisors, the Climate Change Committee, say investing in blue hydrogen is problematic for a country legally obliged to cut carbon. The big risk of blue hydrogen production using fossil fuels for carbon capture is that we lock in the use of fossil fuels permanently. So that is not where we want to be. So why not just scale up wind turbine green hydrogen and have done with it? You'd need to scale up the size of the offshore wind sector by a huge factor, maybe 20 or 30 times from what we have at the moment. Now that is an enormous undertaking. Teesside today, we could actually watch them decommission old oil and gas platforms and build new wind turbines on the same site. And all the while, oil and gas giants have mounted a massive government lobbying operation, staking all on the government allowing them a future for blue polluting hydrogen from gas. That could lock us into decades of pollution as we try to go carbon free. But one major energy player won't touch blue hydrogen. We believe that zero means zero. We are in the middle of a climate emergency. We don't want to go down a route of fossil fuel based hydrogen because we've already made, already made great strides forward in renewable energy. Many say if polluting blue hydrogen has a future, it's solely in hard to decarbonise heavy industries like steel or cement. Ministers seem to agree. People assume that it would be used for home heating, but actually there's probably more uses for it in other hard to decarbonise sectors, such as you mentioned, possibly trains, possibly heavy goods vehicles, possibly steel production, other industrial processes, etc. There are alternatives for, for domestic heating, such as, uh, such as heat pumps, whereas some of these sectors don't have alternatives at the moment. But, you know, the jury's very much still out. On Teesside, the iron and steel is all but gone. Oil and gas is being decommissioned. Nobody says blue hydrogen is ideal, but it is carbon reducing and it is jobs. That matters here. Well, if you look at the former steel work site, we've got the development corporation, the Tees work site, and that is going to be the UK centre for net zero, whether that's carbon capture, hydrogen, offshore wind, battery technology, and we're going to be creating more than 20,000 jobs on that site over the next 15 years. Everybody knows hydrogen costs a enormous amount more. As with any market, if we get into mass production of hydrogen, the cost will come down. So beyond the soft furnishings at High Grove's hydrogen houses, hard choices lie ahead. Alex Thompson there.